this Waterman 442.5V um, hails from the 1910s. So this was which ink works really best with vintage pens. Hi, this is Kai from Kikai Craft, and I have shared a video of my trip to Spain. So as promised, I am back to share a video of one of the pens that I got from Julia Gosano's plant uh, place. Okay, so that pen is this little tiny pocket pen. This is a Waterman, and it is the Waterman 442.5V. All right, so let's just have a look at it a little bit far. So it's quite a short pen. I will do a little bit of a very quick size comparison in a bit, but let me just uh, look at the pen with you. So as you can see, let's scoot you in. All right, so the pen itself has sterling silver all around. And if I'm not mistaken this pattern that it has a little bit of a flower pattern there this is called the hand engraved vine pattern and as you can see it is all around the pen now originally this pen did not come with a clip in fact you can remove the clip like so and this is how the pen originally was okay now eventually Waterman release clips such as this and um, I think Julia Gusano either added it or when she got it, it already had it. But let's just have a look at the pen. And as you can see right here, here's where it starts. Okay, I hope the camera is picking it up. It actually says Waterman's ideal uh, fountain pen. And that's what it says all around okay and it is a screw cap it has a safety nib which i will show in a while but before that let's just have a look at the other features like right here i hope the camera's catching this it says waterman's okay it's like engraved into that black part uh it's like black rubber if i'm not mistaken it says waterman's and then it says uh, registered or Reg US uh, Pat Office or Reg US Pat Off in USA. That's what it says right here. And then at this part, it says Waterman's uh, Made in USA. Okay, so that's what it says. Those are the engravings. And actually, this part of the pen is blank. And you could choose to have something engraved on it. And I think the previous owner of this pen had something engraved on it, as you can see. But I like how the engraving really sort of matches with the rest of the pen. So then it looks very pretty. Uh, the top finial, it has this, I don't know, it's like almost like a brownish sort of rubber going for it. And as I mentioned, there is this rubber bottom finial and if you notice a lot of the vintage pens have this little breather hole right there on the cap now some people think that it's because um if you swallow it then you know you can breathe through it but actually that's a very uh recent uh, a very recent addition to caps for vintage fountain pens that's really meant to make sure that the ink doesn't flow into the cap, especially for those that don't have the safety nib. Now, this particular pen, I'm gonna scoot you out right now. This Waterman 442.5V um, hails from the 1910s. So this was made sometime 1910, maybe 1920, and it is from the uh, production of Lewis Waterman. I'm kind of reading a little bit here. And so he started making pens sometime late 1800s. And this is one of the pens that they produced in 1910. Now this particular model, if I'm not mistaken, ran sometime 1910 to 
Oh, uh, was it like 1920s? Is that what I read about it? So that's what it is. Um, just to put that clip in, you simply have to slide it in. And of course, you have to make sure that the hole is still open. I suppose that's why the design is the way it is, to make sure that the ink doesn't flow back into the cap. There was some technical um, discussion about vacuums and all of that, and I am not very much into that kind of discussion, so I will not pretend to do that here. Um, oh yeah, I don't really quite recall. If I haven't mentioned, this is sterling silver. The clip is 935, if I'm not mistaken, so is the body. Okay, let's go ahead and open it up. As I mentioned, it is um, screw. It has a screw cap, so to uh, remove the cap, you have to screw it off. Now, since it is a vintage safety nib, it's very important that the pen is upright when you do that, otherwise you'll spill the ink. Um, and when Julia Gusano explained this to me, basically there is a stopper somewhere in the cap um, that will hold the ink in the ink reservoir so that when I turn it over, as long as it's capped. Oh yeah, I forgot there is one more notation there at the bottom finial. Okay, so basically the idea is that since there's a stopper there, it doesn't matter like how you turn it as long as it is um, screwed. As long as the cap is screwed in, then there's no ink that'll spill. But of course, as soon as you unscrew it, ink will spill if it's the if it's turned over because the ink is literally just there okay and uh, the nib is also right there and to access that nib basically what you need to do is to screw the bottom finial so to put it in you screw it this way and to take it out, just screw it this way. Of course, this is very similar to the uh, retractable nibs that we have now, um, mainly the Bohem from Mont Blanc. So what we're gonna do right now, I'll just show you a very quick size comparison in case you are wondering how long this thing is. And then I will talk about how I managed to polish this because right now it's nice and shiny um it was still kind of nice and shiny when i started with it but not quite as much okay just as a quick size comparison nothing long or anything like that just in case you're wondering these are a few of the common well the more accessible pens right now so you have your lamy so we already know it's going to be very different because the lamy is quite long and this is a pocket pen but i've just put it there for reference this is the Pelican M200. This is the Mont Blanc Mozart, the Mont Blanc Bohème. This is our Caveco uh, size pen. This is a Caveco bronze. And we have the Mont Blanc um, Rouge et Noir Baby. And we have a Lilliput and Fire Blue. And with all of these, this one is the smallest, the shortest. So it is shorter than your Lilliput and it's even shorter than the Mont Blanc baby definitely shorter than your Caveco. This is the size difference, quite a big size difference. Here it is with your Caveco, with the Mont Blanc baby, and with the Lilliput. All right, now let's go ahead and compare it with the more modern retractable nib, um, the Mont Blanc Bohem. The thing with the Mont Blanc Bohème is, uh, yep, similarity is that they have retractable nibs or safety nibs, screw cap. But since this is a modern invention, you, if you turn it over, nothing comes out because the ink is, uh, what, the reservoir is no longer an eyedropper filler mechanism. Um, it's already a cartridge uh, pen. So basically, that's where it is, okay? But the old one, you literally have to fill it in by eye dropping the ink into the reservoir. So just like what I showed you earlier, the reservoir is right there. That's where you put the ink in. Right now it has water because it's supposed to 
have water in it when you store it since the, there is a cork at the bottom and you should make sure that cork is always wet so that it doesn't dry and become brittle. All right, so that's how it looks. Okay, nib-wise, it has a size two nib, so just for fun, let's check. Actually, because I haven't really checked it myself, so I wanted to check it with you. Okay, that's how the modern uh, safety nib looks like. Okay, I cannot make that stand, so it will go on its side. Okay, this has a size two nib, and as you can see, that's the difference between, oops, a <laughs> vintage size two and the Mont Blanc Bohem nib. Shape is quite different. Breather hole, and this one is cute. It has a heart. This one is usual Mont Blanc circle. All right, again, if I want to retract that nib, I have to make sure the pen is upright so the ink stays inside. Okay, let's put this aside again. Retract. Okay, now when I received this pen from uh, Julia Gusano's place, it was in very good condition actually, but I just thought I wanted it to be a little bit shinier. So I decided to polish it up. Now, just to be, just to be helpful to those who like shining their pens, their vintage pens, one of the most important things that I got was this uh, polishing cloth from Cape Cod. Um, I'll be linking, no, no, I'll be sharing a video right after this discussion so that you see exactly what I did. So I used this polishing cloth. I very lightly rubbed it on the surface and then I didn't leave it on for long because that's actually what it says here. It says that I have to rub tarnished object gently for tough jobs just rub a little harder it wasn't too tarnished and then I have to buff dry with soft absorbent cloth or paper towel do not try to wash polish off polish must be buffed off then the cloth can be used over and over um, and then there's just instructions if it becomes dry um, then where's that Okay, so maybe it's not here. Maybe it's somewhere else where I read you do not leave it dry. You have to, um, you have to like buff it off. Where was that? I read that somewhere. Okay, so maybe it's not here. Maybe I read it as a tip somewhere. And I also used two cloths. One basically to cushion it and we will actually be using this for inking in a bit. I'll show you how it's inked. And this one I use for buffing. It's a very, very soft uh, cloth. This is basically a baby uh, towel cloth, not a terry um, cloth, something softer. Um, I also used some of these to sort of uh, dry some of the nooks, especially in the cap. And this I basically used to wash the inside. So I just put in some water. I put it um, in the reservoir and I just um, simply removed the water and did that over and over again. Again, I'll be sharing a video, I think maybe right about now, so you see how I did it.
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and ink it up. If you are into vintage pens, um, I've read a little bit about which ink works really best with vintage pens because we have to remember that these pens were made way before our more modern and funky and adventurous inks were made, way before sheening and shimmers and all of that. Um, and so a lot of the chemicals, I would think, were not available or were not utilized during that time. And so the pens aren't exactly built for the chemicals that we use. And we have to be a bit more careful with the ink that we do use. And um, so I did a bit of a research on this and a lot of vintage pen collectors, what they do is that they err on the more conservative side and they use um, old brand names and uh, one of these would of course be Waterman which I chose because Waterman pen, Waterman ink but um, they also advised uh, vintage pen collectors to use um, what's this? Pelican inks and uh, Schaefer inks for and Pilot inks to ink their uh, vintage pen. So for this one, I have chosen the Waterman Inspired Blue for it because I really like the color. I didn't know I like a blue, but right now I have two blues that are in my favorites list. Okay, so how do we ink this one up? Um, so to ink it up, all you have to do is unscrew it. And if there's any water in it, maybe because you've stored it, just have to remove the water. Now you see the water is a little blue because it had blue ink. Now, what I like to do is just to move the ink a little because I don't know if there are any trap water drops or whatever, I shake it a little and then I do that again. Now I do that with confidence because I'm sure that the ink is inside and so I'm not hurting the ink at all and it's very very light 
caps as well. Okay, once you've done that, you want to get your um, ink. Oh, okay. You want to get your ink and you want to have an eyedropper because it has the eyedropper filler mechanism. Okay, and basically you get a little bit of ink. Um, for this one, I know if I go all the way to 0.5, it should work. It has maybe a 0.5 filling thing. Maybe I could get more than that, but this is enough, I think, for me. Okay, you could fill it up a little more because as you can see, it doesn't go all the way up to the ink, I mean to the nib tip. Just scoot you in. Okay, so it should go all the way up there if you really want to fill it, but I don't. So I just put about 0.5 milliliters in it. Let's put that aside. And then um, if you just want to store it, you're maybe not going to use it yet. You just screw the cap on and it doesn't matter. You turn it over. It doesn't matter. The ink stays in the reservoir. But if you want to uh, use it, you have to make sure again that it's upright. Screw the cap off. And then you turn the finial, the bottom finial up and out will come your 14K nib. This particular one has quite a nice flex to it. So this is a size two 14K uh, vintage nib. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna have a little bit of a writing sample with you just so you see how uh, it writes and you can experience it with me. Oh, by the way, you see these little leather pieces when you get from Julia Gusano. Well, when I got from her, the pens came, oops, the pens came with uh, these leather pouches. Very, very nice soft leather too. Okay, so let's get a notebook. I'm using the Leutsch term 1976, uh, 1917, why did I say 76? The Leutsch term 1917 and A6, oh, maybe that's why. And I'll just show you how it writes. I'm gonna write it with a bit of uh, flex. So again, upstroke is light, downstroke will have a little bit of pressure, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and write quite thick actually if you put pressure in it I'll scoot you in a bit more okay All right, now I'm going to write without pressure. And then again, I'm gonna write with pressure. Only in the downstroke, uh, pressure is only in the downstroke.
All right, now this, I think the ink was a little heavy there because it is newly inked, but here you can see that it is a bit, uh, what's this? Integrated into the nib. I don't know the word for that. Okay, let's just fix that up. Okay, so that is how it writes. It's quite a smooth writer. It's not finicky at all. Again, to make sure that the ink doesn't come off or spill out, you gotta hold it upright when you um, retract the nib. And if the cap is on secure, you can turn it. It's not gonna throw ink anywhere, even in the cap itself. There is no ink at all. Okay, even if it's like exposed. All right, now just so you see a little bit more of the way it writes and the way it flexes, I do have in my personal sort of encyclopedia, <laughs> if you can call it that, of my nibs, I mean, sorry, my pens and also my nibs. You can see a little bit of it here, a little bit of its history, what the numbers mean. So if you have a Waterman and it has 442, the first four means it's sterling silver, it's 935. Um, the second four tells you it is a safety nib and the two tells you the nib size. The one half right here tells you that it's half the girth of its regular uh, pens and the V here means vest or baby. And so this is how it, it my entry looks. Um, here it says it was, uh, based on my research, it was produced sometime 1910, 1920, which makes this pen a hundred years old. Wow. Okay, that is kind of cool. And uh, the pens were originally crafted in France. Um, and then you see that the patent was registered in the US. Um, this is how it writes. So this is no pressure and this is pressure on the downstroke. Okay, no pressure and pressure on the downstroke. So you gotta give it a little time to sort of work with the nib so that you can see more of the line variation. It is 8.5 centimeters capped and 9.5 centimeters uncapped and with the nib out. Okay, and that's about it. I think this is the first of, oops, the three pens that I got from Julia Gusano's shop. I'll be releasing a video um, on the other two that I got and I'll be sharing it. So if you're interested, Stay tuned because I will be sharing it in a few of my subsequent videos. This is Kai from Kikai Craft and wherever you are, I hope you're going to have a great day or you're having a restful evening. Bye everyone!